It's time to color grade all that C log footage from a Canon R5, huh? All right, let's dive into it. Okay, C log on the Canon R5 is the color recipe that we get baked in the camera from Canon. There is nothing more than that. Now, I've heard rumors that C log 3 may be coming to the Canon R5 in a future firmware update, which would be amazing. But I've heard that for months, it hasn't happened. I don't know if it's going to happen, I hope it does. But until that time, we are stuck with C-Log and working with C-Log, which is actually a much less wide gamut than you get in C-Log or V-Log or Vanessa log And so because of that, there's some tricks and trades on how to work with C-Log and get a good color grade from it. So what I wanted to do is to dive in the computer and look at what we got there. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so here we are back in the computer. And now what I wanna do is I just wanna dive in. I am gonna be using Adobe Lumetri for this. But that being said, these principles and these concepts are pretty much the same if you're using DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Now, if you see here, the first thing I want you to do is to make sure you pull up whenever you're working with log footage, you need to pull up your scopes. And the most important scopes you're gonna pull up are your waveform and your vector scope. And your waveform basically measures the luminance light values across it. And your vector scope will show you your color direction. And this is gonna be important for skin tones later. We're gonna be using both of these, but to start off right now, I don't need this. I wanna fix my color luminance first and my, my saturation levels. So you know what, I'm just going to, to make this easier, I'm just gonna hide my vector scope and concentrate just on the waveform to start off with. It's a good way to start off with when you're starting off. So what I can do, is I can come over here now and you can look at my basic correction panel and I can start looking at some changes. Now, if you don't know how to read a waveform, it's pretty much just showing me the luminance and light values inside my picture. You can actually see that little red spike there. That's actually my face. These blue spikes are actually these color gradients of blue right there. And there's actually a tiny little streak right here, which is this little light here. Now, as you can see, waveform, we've compressed it. It basically carries as much information as it can. So we need to basically expand that out. And as you can see, my blacks are way off the floor and my highlights my mid-tones and stuff are very, very high from the mid-light. So the first thing I wanna do is to start to get this back. So you can, the first way you can do this, you can come over to the basic correction panel and actually start using the basic correction panel. So I'm gonna start off, the first thing I always end up starting off with blacks. I'm just gonna take my blacks here and I'm gonna try and drop them down to the floor. Now in this situation, you're not always going to want to crush your blacks, guys. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. In this situation, I do know there's a lot of heavy shadows and blacks in my armpits. I'm okay pulling that down. So I'm gonna actually just pull that down a little bit more. I'm just gonna pull that down here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my whites and I'm gonna pull that back up. Now you can see this little tiny streak right here. That's the light corner of the light that is clipping. I'm gonna let that go for right now because that's just, uh, I don't mind that. What I wanna do is I wanna get my, my light levels back up a little bit more. Bring my blacks down a little bit more and I can do something like that. And then you can see I'm starting to bring my blacks down a little bit more. Now you can see the other thing is that log is very, very flat. It's very desaturated. So the other thing I like to do is I always like to add a bit of saturation. Let's put about usually 20%. So to 120 is about as far as I would push it because it gets a little fake after that. But usually bring back 20%. You can see that. And you can see right away the difference here from just those few little tweaks. However, I am not done there. If you look here, I still wanna perfect some of this stuff. And really where I wanna go next is I wanna come here into my curves palette. And the curves palette really will allow me to begin to refine some of these moves and make this look a lot better. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click here in the middle. I do wanna kinda of protect my mid-tones and then I just wanna start playing like that. If you look here, I just feel like these blacks should be a little richer and a little darker. I just want a little more contrast in this image. Now, I could come up here and adjust my contrast like this, and you can see that, and I don't mind doing that, but I'm a big believer. I kind of always like to come in here and really control it a little bit better. So if you come here, I click this point midway up on the curves just to protect my mid-tones. I'm gonna click another one here, and then I'm just gonna slowly, I'm gonna bring my blacks over. I'm gonna bring them a little bit darker. I just want it a little bit richer. And you see how that just, all this noise over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna smooth that out. I'm just gonna bring it down just a bit more. And I might even bring this down just a hair. 
more, right? Now that's a little too much. It's a little too contrasty. So I think that's fine. And then what I might want to do is maybe let's say I'll put something there. Maybe I want to bring my skin tones up just a hair. I'll bring that up there. And then maybe I want to bring my, my whites up just a little bit too. Now, if this is a more subtle difference, you can see how that adds just a lot more punch to my picture. And the good news is I'm not just throwing contrast all over the picture. I'm now I'm adding contrast specifically in the areas where I want to go. So using your curves is very, very important in keeping those little nice areas taken where you need to in your uh, color grading. So now there's another very important thing here in the curves panel of Lumetri, Lumetri, and that is this. You can start to control some of these hue saturation curves. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, I really want to up the color contrast just a bit between this blue wall and my warm skin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here. And if you look, if I click on my cheek, if you notice right here, I have created a set of clicks on my color hue, which will protect it. That means that whatever I do, that's not going to affect it. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to come over here to the blues and I'll click this here. Let's say I click on these blues right here. You can see it created me another range of stuff. And now what I can do is I can just maybe boost my saturation up, just maybe a hair on that. And I'll keep my skin tone safe. And this way I can just do that. And then I can also do hue versus hue. So let's say, once again, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to click on my skin tones to protect them. And then I'm going to click here on this blue here. Click on the eyedropper, click on the blue. You'll see once again, it gives me my little thing. And now you can see I can actually change certain colors. I can actually make this more blue. I can make that if I wanted my wall to be purple for some reason, I can do that. Now, I don't want to do that. I just wanted to show you how you can do that to target certain hues. Now, another thing I could do if, let's say, I once again target my cheeks, if I come out of the hue versus Luma, if I wanted this background to be a, maybe a little bit darker, I could do just the blues. I could target that and pull them down like that. I could also brighten them up if I wanted to. I might take this down just a hair bit, just to soften off those highlights, just a hair. And you can see right there how these little things make a difference. You can see how the hue versus saturation, how I just pop a little more blue, increases the contrast. And then hue versus Luma, you can see how it just adds those little things. And all these curves add up to pretty big but subtle change. So the curves are one of those things you should always come back and do and refine in your color grade when you're working with Canon R5 C-Log footage. Because C-Log does not give you a lot of room to work with. And this is kind of those ways we're taking, we're trying to maximize as much as we can get from this file. So now let's go down to the, what I consider the next most important thing. And if you come here to your effects controls, you will see here that I've created a Lumetri color grade. And I can click that on and off and you can really see the difference there. Now there's one more thing that I really like to do and that is just to make sure I'm good on skin tones. Remember, we talked about that vector scope earlier. Let's see how it plays in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make a new Lumetri effect. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come here in effects. I have it in my favorites. And I'm just going to drag over Lumetri here. I'll drag it back on my clip. You'll see it pops me up. And this is important. I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna rename it. And I'm gonna call this Skin Tones. Boom. Now I've got my skin tones like that. And this is one of the fun things about uh, Lumetri and how you go about it is you can make basically tons of this because we're about to dive into secondary color correction, which is a very powerful tool. Um, honestly, DaVinci Resolve does this even better than Lumetri. Um, but it's one of those things, once you start thinking about secondary color correction, it's going to really help you know how to approach this stuff a lot better. So let's go and look at secondary color correction. So I'm here now, and if you look, I can basically click on this thing. I'll make sure I'm on my skin tones, and I'm going to go to HSL secondary. Now, technically speaking, you're supposed to just click on a click on a, an eyedropper and set the eyedrop color. And if you click on this little thing, it'll show you what you've done. 
I'll be honest, I don't know if it's my computer, I don't know what it is, but for me, the eyedropper in secondary color correction never really works that well. I'll show you what does work. I'll basically reset this effect and I'll actually just click on my reds because the Canon R5 tends to do skin tones very, very red. So if I click on reds now and then show you that mask, I'll click on color gray, boom, you can see how much better that mask looks. You can really, really see here how much of my skin tones we have gotten in there. Now, I'm gonna basically come in here. I am going to uh, denoise this a lot. I like to put that at 100%. And then I don't wanna see any kind of uh, flickers in there. So I, I tend to like to put a little bit of a blur in there. You know, you can pick up the eyedropper plus tool and click on anything else that you feel that you need in there. I feel that's pretty good. I might change my luminance just a bit. So you can, you can adjust each of these things uh, as needed. So you see, I can adjust my luminance. If for some reason I wanted to expand this, I could. Uh, but my saturation, all this feels like it did a pretty good job. And I feel that's pretty good. So now if you look, I am just affecting my skin tones. Now let's go back to our scopes and talk about this. I'm gonna pull back up my vector scope here and look at it. And what you'll see here is you'll see now, first of all, our waveform looks a little weird, but that's okay because right now you see how this gray area is here. What's grayed out, I don't see. I'm only measuring what is shown on there. I can actually cut this on and off and you will see the difference here. Now, this vector scope is where it's important. This line right here is called the skin tone line. And it's very, very important to try and get your skin tones on that line for the most realistic representation of, of human skin that you can get. That is the skin tone uh, line, and that is really what we want to get. And as you can see right now, I am shifted over here very, very much toward the magenta. So I want to shift this back over to the green. So all I'm going to do, I could do this a couple ways. One, I could take my tint, and maybe I'm going to tint this back up so we can really just keep it on the line, and I'll tilt it back over a hair to the green and you can see here looking at my face how that just takes a little of that excess red out of my face now in my opinion it still feels maybe a little bit dead and i want to have a little bit life and here's where we can go in a very important part of the secondary color correction which is this in the correction you can do this single color correction thing or you can do a three-way color corrector in your piece and usually what's good to do if we come, I'm gonna add just a hair bit of red back into my shadows, right? And the reason why is because that red kind of represents there's blood underneath our skins and that red in the darker parts of our skin just kind of looks like the buffalo. It just makes us look a little less zombie-like. And in the highlights, your highlights in your skin tend to pick up what's in the room. In this situation, the room is a little bit bluer. So I can do that. And then you can see I've shifted it over just a little bit more. And maybe in my midtones, I might shift this over just a hair to bring that line back. And I might even bring this hair over just a hair more like that. Now that I've done that, you can see my skin tones. Now I would like to desaturate my skin tones just a hair, uh, just so they don't feel a little bit too over the top. So I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna drop my saturation down maybe to 94. 4%. And then because I drop saturation, I'm going to increase the contrast just so it doesn't feel washed out. So I'm just going to bring my, my contrast up just a little bit. And the great thing is you can see I've only affected the skin tones here in my image. And, you know, just by, by my eye, I might take a little bit of that green back out, just bring a little bit of warmth back. But you can see now that we have a, a much closer angle. And I'm kind of intentionally keeping this maybe a hair over uh, uh, on this line here, just because I like a little bit of that warmth in here, especially for the blue. And then, you know, if I really wanted to, I could probably bring this back up here and bring my yellows just a hair back, kind of like this, just to make that line look a little better. And there you go. So you can see now I just added a little bit of life. I'll probably drop my saturation down just a little bit more just to chill that out a bit more. And there you go. We're on the skin line. We're on the tone line now, and we're in pretty good shape. And you can see now the difference between those two. And if I basically 
make this thing all the way, you can see how these two play out and get you a very, very different look in the Canon R5. So there you go. That is basically how I go about getting skin tones and more importantly, how I go about doing a basic color grade in the Canon R5. If you are interested in this, this is something that you're interested in. Um, I have created a set of custom LUTs and they're based on different color temperatures. 5600 Kelvin tends to be a little different than 3200 Kelvin. If you're interested in getting some of those LUTs just to see what they look like, you can click down below. I've got some links down there for you to check them out. But anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, hopefully that'll help you get out there and be able to maximize this footage from the Canon R5 uh, in the C-Log footage. And yeah, good luck, guys. Leave me any questions you got below. Keep out there. Keep on shooting. And I'll talk to you soon.